Hey, what's up, gang? This is a realistic breakdown of the Eagles' 2020 schedule going into this new NFL season. That's not fully guaranteed, of course. But if we were going into the season, this is this will be a breakdown based off the strength of our schedules. Now, going into the 2020 season, we have the eighth easiest schedule, a very favorable schedule for the NFC champs last year, um, where we had the sixth easiest schedule. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, well, if we had the sixth easiest schedule, why didn't we win? Well, well, key injuries, um, drop passes, key drop passes. Um, and then lack of strength on the defensive side of the ball and skill positions on the offensive side of the ball. Now, uh, this is just a realistic breakdown based off the strength of that. And I'm going to. Now, for week one, I'm not really sold on the Redskins just because they have the 32nd ranked quarterback in the league. And also, they just don't have a coach that's comparable to Doug Peterson and uh, Andy Weidel, and I'll tell you exactly why. Now, offensive side of the ball, they're pretty weak. Now, they have a 32nd ranked quarterback going into 2020, um, the 29th ranked offensive line, and they're just so abysmal on that position that they don't even have a top 10 lineman, according to PFF. And we're having a very stout defensive front that's just going to toy with them all day. My only concern, which is not really a concern, is the front seven of the Washington Redskins, which was which has been touted as one of the best in the NFL. But to be quite real, um, once you get past the front seven, you're really looking at a bunch of weaklings who are going to be get taken advantage of by Carson Wentz, the top three quarter. So 2-0 against Washington, but can I see us going 3-0 against the Rams? Yes. Simply because we own them. And Jared Goff, without a touted running game to disguise his horrible quarterback play, I feel like that leaves the Rams vulnerable. And then the fact that we know that Sean McVay can't outcoach Doug Peterson. But outside of Jared Goff, I think we have a pretty much even offensive line. Uh, the wide receiving core, they might have a, an edge on that. But again, poor quarterback play. And then defense. Uh, I think we're very like evenly matched on defense as far as like, you know, B, B grade secondary. And then the front seven that can get after the quarterback. But I remain confident that we can beat the Rams. And next, I have the Cincinnati Bungles. I'm just going to make this quick. Uh, they, they they are disrespectful with this ranking. They put him above quarterbacks who are proven in this league. Um, doesn't really matter about the wide receiving core. A.J. Green can't stay healthy, and these other guys are still unproven. T. Higgins, John Ross, blah, blah, blah. And then you have a bottom ranked offensive line so you're basically going to scare this kid his first league Bengals go two and 14. now i'm not as too concerned with jimmy garoppolo we can we can either come at this game four and one or three and two um now just simply because their san francisco is really good in the trenches um i don't really believe in their skill positions too much on the offensive side but their offensive line and d line are still pretty top notch. Uh, they have guys. Uh, they're a top five, and they still have the same defensive personnel minus the coach. I think this game is just going to be one of those defensive battles that come down to the wire, and it all depends on you know who can make that last game winning drive. And both these quarterbacks have game winning drives, but of course, I believe in mine. And this is another one of the games that confused me because the Steelers are still a pretty good team. But it's the fact you have Ben Roethlisberger, who you don't know where he's at in the stage of his career. Like the, you know, and they still have, you know, a very good offensive line that can protect him, keep him upright with uh, Marquise Pouncey and, and those guys. Um, and then they have a like arguably top five defense. So if you ask me, I would know. Um, I would say I would be surprised if he lost because, again, Ben Roethlisberger, good wide receiving core, uh, top five defense. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we won just because we know that Carson Wentz is good against top five defenses. And then another thing, like the game is in Pittsburgh, so that's another disadvantage. I'm not the one that's going to rip on Lamar Jackson. I don't think he's going to have that same success. And then the Eagles' defense does well against mobile quarterbacks. Now, don't be fooled by these numbers with the wide receiving core. Um, I still think they're going to be very formidable, uh, something that you don't want to mess with, especially if they get Devin DuVernay at that wide receiver spot number two. 
And then the defense is none to sniff at either. They have the best secondary in the league, and then their front seven just got better than last year. This is the gauntlet that the Eagles have to go through for three weeks, but I feel like we can win this game. Um, and Carson going to prove that he's a better quarterback than Lamar Jackson. Now by week seven, we'll be 5-2, and two, get the Giants. Now, it says 7-2, but that's because I gave us two wins over the Giants and the Redskins automatically just because I know we're going to be 4-0 against them. We've been 4-0 against them for the past three years. I don't see that changing. Um, the wide receiving core lacks a star, you know, not really the same as last year. Uh, the offensive line isn't that good, and the defense is about the same, so not really. One of the more exciting games of the year, always when Dallas plays Philadelphia. Now, I'm not going to say that this is going to be an easy win, because I do believe that we're going to win, but it's not going to be as easy because the offensive power that Dallas has. However, um, you know, this just shows what the weapons they have, but at the same time, uh, like the line is pretty suspect because of the retiring of Travis Frederick. So that leaves your center and your left guard spot completely open, leaving free range for uh our all pro tackles and Fletcher Cox and Malik Jackson to get up in there. And then compared to last year, we'll actually like be able to score on, on Dallas because we have a better receiving core and Dallas has gotten worse on defense. They got much slower on the backside of their defense with the signing of a uh, ha-ha digs. They lost Byron Jones, um, and they don't really have a star on that. And then, then they got older on, on the defensive line. So how much pressure are they really bringing compared to last So this is pretty much what I have a record looking like just because I have that swing game with the Rams. You know what I'm saying? Because outside of Jared Goff, we're pretty much evenly matched on both sides of the ball. And with a 6-2, and 5-3 and three record, we easily be a top-10 team. A shoe in for the playoffs. Now, the Giants week nine, well, week 10, because we have week nine by, I'm not really concerned about even on the road just because, well, the Giants just haven't really proven anything in the last three years. Now, I wouldn't know too much thing about this one. Um, They have a new coach in Kevin Stefanski, which features more of the tight end run offense. Um, And then they have a 21 first ranked defense. So I don't know, like this game could go the way uh, you. To me, I just feel like you got to get pressure on Baker Mayfield in order to beat the Browns. Because if you don't give him time to throw those weapons, Austin Hooper, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, man, and we don't want that. I'm still confident to win just because they have a better coach and quarterback. Bro, I find this is the year we beat Seattle. After the last two out, well, last two or three outings we play against them, I feel like this is the year just because uh, Russell Wilson doesn't have doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily have the same weapons he will last year. Uh, the defense has gotten a little softer because with the loss of Jadeveon J- J- Clowney, and then receiving core, I think a lot of people will be surprised at the drop off of DK Metcalf uh, as his weaknesses of bad route running will be exposed. And he won't have as easy as time taking advantage of our defense because of the added skill positions. Now, just because it's Aaron Rodgers, I still count this as a loss just because it's Green Bay at home, um, where they're known to be pretty much undefeated. Uh, I know we pretty much came on scape last time we played there. Their offensive line is still pretty good, still can hold them upright. Um, now, they did lose a little bit of strength on defense. Just because they lost Blake Martinez and Kyle Fackrell, meaning less run coverage and intermediate pass coverage. Also means better tight end production, but you still got to count the fact that it's Aaron Rodgers. So, And then uh, their wide receiving core isn't really scaring nobody. So the whole point is to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers, which is something that's always been hard to do. I also think this is the year that would beat the Saints. Uh... One, because they play us in Philly. So, a better advantage for us. And all in all, I just think this is going to be one of the more exciting games of the year. The the Eagles get their revenge. Uh, Our playoff run, like, truly begins. Like, I think our playoff run begins with Seattle. But, you know, overall, I think this is a win. Now, I do admit that Kyler Murray is destined for a great year this year just because I believe in the tradition of a second-year quarterback. I don't think his team will overall have enough to beat us outside DeAndre Hopkins. So just to not bore myself, uh, after the Cardinals win, we just 
win the rest of the year because the Cowboys and Redskins will both be decimated by this year and will make the playoffs, and that's another story from there.